The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of ONTV's management, staff, or board of directors. Detroit Basketball! And hello and welcome into the Views from the Sideline podcast. Malik. Yeah. What day is it? What day is it specifically? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> gotcha. What am I supposed okay, to say? Okay, what week is this then? What Let's week get is to this? The fun oh, part. okay. Uh there's really nothing special about this week, I don't think. Not for me, not really. It's uh yeah, it's week one of college football, Joey. I'm so I'm it's week one. I'm so happy for you. Listen, <laughs> it's time to be a sicko again. <laughs> it's time. All right. It's been too long. Yeah. Preseason didn't do it for me. Like it doesn't I, <laughs> do thing much I'm for anybody. Saying, football season is actually here. No more week zero. Now, week zero was entertaining. It was. Yeah. There were some weird games, some fun games, mm. but the big boys are here. Yeah. So first, we're, we're going to do a couple new NFL updates real quick. We had the the fifty three man rosters announced yesterday, um, and then we'll get into college football week one as we get to see all these new teams and what they're doing. So. NFL roster cuts were yesterday. I like the fact that they do them all in one day now so that they're not like tiered. Um, it just makes it feel a little more eventful, I would say. And the Lions made their roster announcements. And to the, I don't know how to describe it, the enjoyment for all of us, unfortunately for him. Nate Sudfeld is cut from the team <laughs> after an unfortunate preseason debut. Um, he actually played decent against the Chiefs. Yeah. But it didn't matter. <laughs> mm-hmm. So Nate Sudfeld was cut. That's kind of the one of the, the bigger ones. Uh, the guys that were on the line that made it. Oh, and Jake Fromm got cut too. So. The thing that I like about that, though, is they're only keeping two quarterbacks. I was nervous they were going to try to keep three. Um, so it's Jared Goff and Hendon Hooker. I don't even know why they signed Jake Fromm for like a week. I just, yeah, I don't, um, I don't know. I guess just in case. Um, the running backs were cut down to four as well. Sion Vaki made it. Not think, Didn't think that he wouldn't necessarily. Um, it stinks to see Zonovan Knight go. Um for me personally, I know he's had he some injury good, history, but, but yeah. he, he was pretty good. He played really good with the Jets a couple of years ago. Um, Jamar Jefferson didn't make it in Jake Funk, which is crazy that he's been all over the place. Um, the interesting one is wide receivers as well. Donovan People jones getting cut. How do you feel about that as a Michigan man? He just, I, I don't know what happened after Cleveland. Yeah. he. I don't know if it was just like not a mesh with the Lions, but. He didn't look as fast. Like it just, it seemed like he didn't get open that often. I just I just don't know. Yeah. I don't know what went wrong with mm-hmm. Donovan. Yeah, so Donovan People Jones and then uh, a couple other uh camp like standouts, Darius Fountain and Caden Davis also did not make the cut. They went with Isaiah Williams. And then they just signed uh are they expected to sign? I can't remember if it's actually been done yet. Um, they're looking at getting Tim Patrick on the pack practice squad with expectations of him to make the, the actual roster. Um, and also a uh, fan favorite, Tom Kennedy, once again, off the team, he has been on and off the team <laughs> so much. Um, so I'm sure he'll be back on the practice squad once again. Um, let's see, where is that defensive line? That's another big one. James Houston made the cut. A lot of people thought he was right on the line. I'm sure he was right on the line. Yeah, I was surprised that Betts didn't make it. Yeah, the Canadian defensive end. Mm-hmm. Uh, another like 
standout in training camp or veteran Pat O'Connor was kind of on the line as well. Uh, that was one that I looked into at one point. Uh, so, you know, we got James Houston back. John Kaminsky made it. Makai Wingo. And then you got, you know, the guys that have been around. Aiden Hutchinson, Marcus Davenport, DJ Reader, who DJ Reader just got off the injury. So he'll be ready to go week one, which is awesome. Aleem McNeil, Levi on Zarike, which he's supposed to be stepping up this season, which would be nice to see. Um, and I think that's all the notable ones that I can think of. Not surprising, like CJ Moore and Stephen Gilmore getting cut. They were on the the roster last year, but with the improved secondary, I was pretty sure they were going to be gone. And not that it wasn't really already official, but Jake Bates is officially the, the kicker. So that should be fun to see. Don't know how often we'll see him, but we'll see it. Um, do you have any other takes about the initial 53-man roster at all? Or Tim Patrick, maybe? How do you feel about them starting the season with only four receivers? Um, it, It's a little nervy, but I'm expecting and thinking that, you know, with with there being Tim Patrick getting like getting him ready to go that he's kind of going to be that insurance policy I'm hoping for. Um uh, it's a it's a little weird, but I don't know if I would take too much into it. They have Sam LaPorta that they're going to use a lot. Um Jameer Gibbs it looks like they might put him in some slot roles every once in a while. So they might just get creative with uh how they line up. And they just they might not run as many like three or four wide receiver sets. I don't I'm not sure. Um, I would say they'd probably I mean, most teams are like that, but I would assume they're gonna be a lot of just two receiver sets. It's gonna be St. Brown and Jameson Williams. And then you got Laporta and St. Brown mixing up the middle, and then Jameson hopefully evolving his route tree and being able to go a little deeper, but also be able to, you know, pull off some good posts and things like that. So we'll see. But I don't know. I, I don't have too much to say. I think P- Tim Patrick is good at insurance policy. I I like that move. Um, yeah. The other notable things is C.D. Lamb did sign. He signed a. I don't remember the exact number. It's thirty four million a year with like a hundred and something guaranteed or something. I think that's a record of guaranteed money that he set. Um, does, does it, does, does this do anything for the Cowboys? <laughs> does it make them better? Uh, it's everything <laughs> for the Cowboys. They still don't have Dak Prescott signed to an extension yeah. though yet. Uh, Cowboys fans have literally been waiting for like over a week for this to happen. Mm-hmm. It didn't make sense that Jerry Jones was waiting. Uh, they need him. Obviously he's one of the best receivers in the league. But when your running back room is Zeke Elliott and Dalvin Cook now, who's still forgot about that, still can be good, but I don't think he's the guy he was. Mm-hmm. You got two past their prime running backs, kind of. Yeah, and they got sort of young guy, but not because he's been injured. Rico Dottle, and then you got Deuce Vaughn down there. Play Deuce Vaughn. <laughs> that's what I want. And then you got you got a group of young tight ends. Uh, Ferguson is is pretty good, mm-hmm. but I don't think any of them are like. Elite or like super high level. Yeah, they're the Cowboys. What do you? What are? What are we supposed to say? I don't know. They was, are the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. So that's one of the the holdouts solved. The other one that right now is happening is Jamar Chase. Apparently, he's still not at practice, which is getting a little nervy for the Bengals. I would say, um, but I, I'm assuming they're going to get a, a deal done pretty soon. Um, and then Ayuk. Brandon Ayuk for the San, San Francisco 49ers. Nobody knows what's going on with him right now. There was trade rumors after trade rumors after trade rumors, and then contract talks, and now it's all died off. But nobody knows where it's going. They also still haven't signed Trent Williams, and he says he's not reporting until he gets a contract. I would think as the 49ers, you would be prioritizing Trent Williams over Brandon Ayuk. So if they're doing that, then what is Ayuk going to do? I don't know. And then they have to tra- They have to pay Brock Purdy down the line because it looks like he's going to be their starter for the foreseeable future. So 
San Francisco is in a weird spot. And this could be like their last hurrah, to be honest, because they're going to have to pay some people. Um, and I don't know how it's going to go because they also have to pay Debo in like two years or something. So it, it's it's pretty wild to, to think about. But we'll see. I, I think that's all the holdout ones, the major ones, um, have been solved. But the Bengals and the 49ers still trying to figure out what their star players are going to do. Um, I think that's about it. Is there any other NFL stuff you can think about? I mean, Russell Wilson won the QB job in oh, Pittsburgh. Yeah, we just talked about that. That was kind of expected. Um, I don't know if there's anything else that's like shocking. No, not that I yeah. can think of. Next week is week one for NFL, and that's when I'm going to become a sicko, and I'm going to be super excited. So we'll start NFL picks next week. We'll do week one previews, talk about the Lions and the Rams again, which is going to be awesome. There's going to be some good games. Chiefs and Ravens kicks off the NFL season on Thursday, or next Thursday. Um, Then we have the Brazil game. We'll what talk is about it. Game? Is Friday. Same? Friday? Yeah. Oh, man. I think it's Friday okay. night. That's the That's one crazy. that I think is on Peacock that I think I was telling you about. Oh, God. So I think Thursday night is NBC, but I think Friday night is exclusively Peacock. Hooray. So, it's what everybody's looking forward to. So I might not be watching the that Peacock one. game. And uh, that one's the Eagles and Packers. But we'll get into it next week. Let's go for Malik Sicko mode. And uh, talk about college football week one. So what are you looking forward to most in college football week one? Is it Michigan? Is it just the games? Is it just college football in general? Honestly. Where are we going? I'm prioritizing Michigan second. Okay. Which is kind of a lie. It, it, it is kind of a lie because once once Michigan gets there, that's all that will matter mm-hmm. on Saturday. But it's it's the marquee games. It's the the big time teams, teams that may be overrated. Yeah. Some teams that may be underrated. Uh we saw a very surprising uh result during week zero when Georgia Tech beat Florida State. Their fan base is kind of not more not kind of, they're very upset mm-hmm. because they felt like they feel like they were sold a false bill of goods over the offseason. The defense was hyped up, the run game was hyped up, mm-hmm. and the defense kind of got bullied. And honestly, their old line got bullied too. They just didn't look tough. Yeah. Florida State, they're a completely different team from what they were last year, and mm-hmm. they have a lot of things to figure out. And they were a team that a lot of people thought was probably going to be overrated going into the season because of having successful last season, being ranked tenth this this season. Because of that, people just felt like they were going to be one of the first teams to fall. And maybe they didn't think it would be week zero that they would fall, but people kind of expected them to have some regression. Yeah, but I, I'm excited to see many of the top teams aren't like completely starting over, mm-hmm. but there a lot of teams are retooling from top to bottom. Even Georgia. Georgia lost some guys in the draft. They still have dogs. They still have monster guys. Mm-hmm. But I'm not sure if they are going to be as dominant yeah. as people think. So that Georgia-Clemson game may be more interesting. Mm-hmm. than people expect. I still expect them to beat Clemson because I've said I, I'm i not a huge fan of K, K. Klubnik. I think he's a good college quarterback. I don't think he, he's anything special. Yeah. And I I don't think they intimidate anybody anymore. Mm-hmm. Like, they're, they're just – they're a really good college football program still. But, yeah, they don't strike fear in anybody. Mm-hmm. So, I'm looking forward to that. Um, Penn State plays West Virginia. And last year, Penn State beat them, and Drew Aller looked really good in that game. Yeah. I'm not saying Penn State is going to get upset. I'm not saying that. But I think West Virginia, they surprised people last year winning eight, winning eight games. Mm-hmm. And I don't think they're just going to fall off. I think they're going to be a tough team. And I'm pretty sure Penn State goes to, yeah, they play at West Virginia this this Saturday. Yeah. So those fans are going to be going nuts. Mm -hmm. They're going to be rowdy all four quarters. Yeah. I don't think Penn State just, like, gets it done within two or three quarters. I think it's going to be a fight to the end. Yeah. And if I'm around, that might be the game that I watch. I I think Garrett Green is fun to watch. Yeah. He's pretty exciting. Um, And then you want to know what Penn State's going to look like as far as Big Ten goes. So that might be the game that I tune into. 
if I'm tuning in. Yeah, besides that, there's there's always the first week games where teams play FCS teams. Ohio State's schedule is nothing for like the first five weeks. Yeah. So if you want to watch Ohio State just to see a like show and a kind of a joke, mm-hmm. because they're just they're going to be like thirty point favorites at least in every game. Yeah. Like the first four weeks, it's it's absurd. Mm-hmm. They're gonna do terrible things to Akron. <laughs> I might watch the first quarter, yeah, just to see Jeremiah Smith, the true freshman receiver, who's probably one of the best incoming receivers in modern recruiting history. Mm. He has everything already. He's six three, almost two fifteen, mm. as an eighteen year old, and is like complete as a receiver. It's it's absurd. Mm. So I might watch a quarter just for him, yeah, just to see what he looks like. Um, Miami, Florida is really going to be a really fun game. I'm excited to see what Cam Ward does, and they play at the Swamp, so that's going to be a good one. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's I, I'm just excited for college football, man. Yeah. So every single bit of it. Michigan playing Fresno State. I know it's you know it's a nothing burger. Um, Michigan State's going to play FAU on Friday night. Um, what are you looking for? out of Michigan in this game? Like, is is there a specific thing you're looking for? Do you just, are you just looking for competence or so how are you I, going about it? I expect the defense to be the same as it was for the most part mm. because they're the talent level and just the level of players they have. It's, they're going to destroy most teams they played this season outside of like two or three of them. So I expect them to be on point and Fresno State, is one of the better group of five teams. Mm -hmm. So I don't think they'll just get destroyed all four quarters. That would be fun to watch if they, if Michigan did it, but they have a fun offense. Mm -hmm. They brought in some transfers on defense, some big body guys. Um, Sharon Moore still hasn't named a starter at quarterback. Yeah. I was going to ask about that because I haven't heard any updates. So, I am 100% sure that Alex Orgy is going to be the guy that runs out to start the first series. Yeah. I think Who do you think he's battling with? Well, battling it's it's with. Not, it's him and Davis Warren. Okay. Former walk-on, a guy that was highly recruited in high school before he ended up getting sick and missed a few years of football. Okay. Walked on at Michigan, got some of his uh, confidence back. He's a really talented passer, but he's he's like nothing special. Mm-hmm. to write home to. He'll just be like a consistent, accurate guy. Alex Orgy talked about it. His his talent level as an athlete is out, off the charts. He's almost 240 pounds. He's fast. He can run. He has a rocket arm. And I don't, it's not exactly, it's not the same as Joe Milton. Right. Like Joe Milton was getting the Cam Newton comps. Mm-hmm. He can throw it a mile. Uh, this this isn't the exact same. Every like super athletic guy with a big arm isn't the exact same. Yeah. Like to me, I, I would comp him more to Jalen Milrow is what a lot of people say, the quarterback for Alabama. They had um Alex Orgy kind of simulate Jalen Milrow during their Rose Bowl practices mm-hmm. because they're so similar uh athleticism wise. So more than anything, I just want to see what he looks like. Mm-hmm. Everything I've heard out of camp, he he's played great. He's done what everybody's expected him to do. He's gotten better as a passer. He seems composed. I want to see what he looks like in the real games. What does his touch look like? In the spring game, his short to intermediate passes look good. I want to see him show off that arm and see if he can be consistently accurate mm-hmm. and not just overthrow guys over and over, kind of like Joe Milton did. I just I want to see his composure in this offense. Yeah. Because it's it's led by the run game. It's like almost like 70 30 yeah. run to pass. Mm-hmm. Sometimes like 60 40. Right. But running the ball is going to be the main part of this offense. And you have two to three guys that you can trust, including Donovan Edwards, mm-hmm. who came back for a senior season to be the leader of this offense. Yeah. You Which gotta, I'm, re- I'm really curious to see how he does in a full time. He's the guy. Role. Yeah, he he's said he he's named a captain. He said he's got his confidence back. You also got Kalel Mullings, who's a big body back, going to be the backup guy. Mm-hmm. And Alex Orgy, that's another thing. His running element, 
I expect that to be a major, major part of this offense. Yeah. Because when you have Alex Orgy and Donovan, uh, Donovan Edwards in the same backfield, you have to choose which guy to key on. Mm-hmm. And that will set up the pl- the play action pass, and we'll get guys open eventually. Yeah, because the, both of them are so dangerous with the balls with the ball in their hands mm-hmm. that you have to pay so much attention to it. So I think Fresno State is they're going to load the box a lot. They're going to have like nine or ten guys up near the line of scrimmage, like threatening to just stop the run. I'm sure they're going to throw some blitzes to try and get Alex Orgy off. So yeah, I want to see how composed he is. I want to see what the receivers do. Mm-hmm. because I know how talented they are. I know there's no, like, major big-time receiver in the room, but I think each guy has a lot of talent, mm-hmm. and I want to see what they're capable of, because everybody knows Colston Loveland is one of the best tight ends in the country. Yeah, He's a predicted first-round pick. He could be the first tight end off the board in the next draft. He's that talented. Yeah. So people expect him to be a go-to target, but who – who emerges as the go-to guys? Mm-hmm. Like Samaj Morgan, he changes number to zero. Yeah, everybody's saying he's matured a ton going into his sophomore year. Tyler Morris is going into his, I, I think, his junior season. Uh, number eight, he's expected to step up a ton. Yeah, the the guys that we don't know about fully. Yeah, that at every, that beyond quarterback receiver, I I want to see the other guys because we know what to expect out of the. Expected all Americans. Yeah. It'd be pretty cool to see um Samaj Morgan step up because if it's him and Donovan Edwards being from West Bloomfield, just yeah. be a cool story. I got to see them play um because we film Lake Orion West Bloomfield games. I bet that was a show. <laughs> uh so yeah, that was pretty cool. I know the time that they played Donovan Edwards, um he, he didn't really have to do too much, um, if I remember correctly. Um but it it just would be kind of a cool story for the local guys to really step up this season, which they, they're in position to do so. Yeah. And one more thing, uh, new coordinators. Kurt Campbell, yeah. former QB coach, he's the offensive coordinator now. Mm-hmm. Wink Martindale, who is kind of the architect of the Ravens defense they call that our past two coordinate the past two coordinators that Michigan ran, mm-hmm. uh, Mike McDonald and Jesse Minner. They both ran similar styles of defense. They brought in Wick Mar- Martindale. Um, some people say he's going to blitz more. It won't be anything close to what Don Brown used to do when he sent blitzes like 70% of the time, mm-hmm. which made the defense vulnerable a ton. I don't expect him to do that. Uh, they say Mason Graham and Kenneth Grant are going to play a lot more because the depth isn't as lo- as uh, deep as it was on the D-line last year. Mm-hmm. They've got like four to five guys that they fully believe in. So, yeah, Mason Graham and Kenneth Grant are going to play more. I wonder what what that's going to look like when they get more snaps. Mm -hmm. How much stamina do they have? And lastly, I'd say the transfers. They brought in four transfers for the defensive uh, backfield. Yeah. Uh, One of them is is expected to start, Wesley Walker. He came from Tennessee. He has over, like, a 1,000 snaps of experience. Mm -hmm. I expect him to fill the role next to Makari Page. Uh, They brought in Amir Hall from Albany. Uh, Jair Hill is going to start over him, but I expect to see him a lot. Mm. And Jay Sean Barham, the linebacker from Maryland, who was a all Big Ten linebacker last year, his hype is going through the roof. People are saying he's he's been an absolute monster in Michigan training camp. He can play pass coverage. He can play the run. He's got everything, and he's a high level athlete. Mm. So I expect Jay Sean Barham to pop up a ton. Just because he's an athletic beast and he's a high level football player. So Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited to see what they can do. Yeah. Just, Obviously it's expected they win, but yeah. Yeah. Just getting a feel for it. And that's that kind of goes right into Michigan State. And we kind of talked about it a couple weeks ago. Like I think the biggest thing, at least for me, for Michigan State, is just I mean, you have a new head coach. So how is he going to change his offense? What is he going to change about the offense? And then you have a guy like Aiden Childs coming in that similarly he's a young kid, very athletic. There's some some good potential there, but you don't know what it's gonna look like. Yeah. This is the first time Michigan State is having this type of quarterback. Yeah. And so like how much is that gonna change things? It should help their traditional running game, 
having a quarterback that can run as well. Um, all the reports have been good. Jonathan Smith feels like Aiden Childs is ready. Sounds like he might get a little nervy at times. So, I mean, he's 18, so that probably plays into it. Yeah. But I, I think a good part, first of all, he was named the captain at 18, which yeah. I think that's very rare. That doesn't happen often. Yeah. And he's more of a mobile quarterback than a scrambler. Mm-hmm. Like, everybody knows he's athletic and can move, but he prefers to stay in the pocket. Right. And, like, dime teams up, which he has the ability to do. Yeah, which, which is kind of why I think if they were going to do something with his running, it might be more set plays. Yeah. Could they add RPOs into their offense? I would love it. I don't know if they're going to get that far, but I think that would be cool to add. Um, yeah. well, a lot of Oregon State's passing de- offense was based off of run first, and then play action passing was like yeah. their big thing right. in the passing game. And I think they're, Michigan State's going to need that because I think the wide receivers are going to be not a problem. A I work just, in progress. Yeah. Like yeah. there's talent there, but who's going to be the one to step up? And it's kind of like what you said about Michigan. Like they're kind of along the same lines. Like, there's talent there. You just don't know who's going to be the one to really show out and step up yeah. in this new era. Um, so I'm excited for them to play FAU. Um, I don't know what FAU looks like this year. They're usually nothing burgers for well, football. Well, they, they've been decent lately. Yeah. Like Lane Kiffin, when he was there, he had them rolling. Mm-hmm. But even after him, they they had a few good years. Uh, they, they just named their starter uh, – He's a former Marshall quarterback, lefty. Mm. His name is Cam Fancher. He's kind of mobile, so I'm sure they'll have him running around some. Mm. They got some talented players. Yeah. The other thing that's interesting, too, I think I mentioned it before, is Michigan State's offensive line. Like, can they protect Aiden so that he can stay in the pocket? And that's one of the staples of Jonathan Smith teams. Yeah. Offensive lines being strong. So if they can do that, then he doesn't have to become a scrambler because otherwise in former iterations of this offensive line, he would have had to become a scrambler rather than just a mobile quarterback. Um, So hopefully there's offensive line improvement, defensive improvement, of course. They need improvement across the board for Michigan State. But I'm just excited. Like I haven't – I was just saying this before we got on the podcast. Like I'm excited to see how they do this. Like, what's going to change? Because to me, Michigan State's always had, at least for a while, they've had kind of boring offenses. And I don't think, like, Jonathan Smith is going to do anything crazy because he is more of a traditional offense, like you said, run first. But I'm just hoping that there's some implementation that makes it a little more fun. Use He gets creative. Use Aiden's strengths to be able to open running lanes, create open – play action passes for long, deep balls. Just give me some more big plays. I feel like Michigan State has missed out on big plays for the most part. So, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm excited. Friday night game, again, it's only FAU. So, win the game, get comfortable with this new offense, this new team. But it's kind of, it's kind of exciting. I'm, I'm excited. Yeah. I honestly think the biggest addition for them was – they brought in Joe Rossi, the defensive coordinator from from Minnesota. Mm-hmm. And if it wasn't for him, I think Minnesota might have like a few three and four win seasons in the past few years because mm-hmm. their offense was nothing yeah. for like the past almost three years, especially after Tanner Morgan left. He had that defense playing at a really high level, even without like high-level players, just good college football defenses. And Mel Tucker could not assemble that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) He would bring in a bunch of transfers with potential and not much experience and stick with the same guys, and it never worked. Yeah, Joe Rossi knows what he's doing. And they have some transfers that, even though many of them haven't played on the power four level, Mm -hmm. they all have a, a ton of experience on the group of five level. Like, they know how to play football. They know where to be. The simple stuff. Mm -hmm. The simple things that Michigan State defenses couldn't wrap around their heads the past few years. Like, where to be in coverage, what gaps to fill, like, the simple things, where to be at what times. Joe Rossi should fix that. Hmm. He should be able to. That's what we're hoping for. A new regime, just fresh start. Show me something. 
because the offense was really bad last year. The defense was pretty bad last year. So there's there's only going up from here, but I don't know. I yeah. just need to see some improvements. I I expect some a few rough patches from Aiden Childs and Alex Orgy. Yeah. Both first-time starters. Orgy has been in the program for three years, but he's thrown one pass mm-hmm. in three years. And every other time they brought him in in big situations, it was to run. Yeah. And even though that was successful, it's only one element, element of his game. Right. And you get nervous so, when those guys have to move out of the pocket that their indecisiveness because of that game time of whether they should run or if they should just square up and throw the ball. That's where a lot of the times mobile quarterbacks can get themselves into trouble is when they're indecisive about what they want to do. And at the last second, they're like, oh, maybe I should throw it. And they throw a terrible pick six or something like that. So though there will be some growing pains. I agree with those two. Um but I think, again, I think it's going to be fun to watch both of those teams and what they do because they're going to be kind of similar. Like, again, both teams want to run first. They have mobile quarterbacks that can elevate that running game. And then the wide receivers, like I said, like I keep saying, there's there's talent there. Who's going to be the one that really shows out, though? Who knows? We'll wait and see. We'll find out on Friday and Saturday. Two night games back to back. There, there will be more pressure on Alex Orgy because the schedule is harder and they're ranked higher and yeah. coming off a championship. Mm-hmm. But listen, Michigan fans have to learn. If they've never learned, they got to learn how to be patient. Yeah, and I think for Michigan State fans, like we have to go back to you know, we got to get to a bowl game because although the Big Ten is tougher this year, the schedule is going to be tough. They're definitely winnable games as well. And six games should be in the realm of possibilities. Yeah. I'm I'm going to pull up the Michigan State schedule because besides that really, really hard stretch in the middle of the season, mm-hmm. I kind of forgot what else they have around them. So FAU, then they got Maryland at Maryland. That's a their, – their quarterback situation is up in the air, so who knows how that will go. Then they get yeah. Prairie View. To win. Uh, then they go to Boston College. I would give Michigan State the upper hand, maybe, but Boston College has a few uh, some guys yeah. that could be dangerous. And then it's that tough stretch of Ohio State, Oregon, Iowa, and Michigan. Yeah. But then they round out the season with Indiana, yeah. that's at home, go to Illinois, home against Purdue, home against Rutgers. So they get to finish the season. This, this is not three, easy. <laughs> three home games, yeah, though, out of the last four games. So... Six games is right on that cusp. Yeah. Because FAU, Prairie View should be two free ones. If they could start out 4-0, and oh, I, I think it's – Yeah. Yeah. They'd be fine. That would, that's best case scenario. Even if, if they go 3-1, and one, mm-hmm. I think Michigan State fans would be very happy. Yeah. But, yeah, I, I would agree. I think, I, if they I think win, there's a chance they might drop the Maryland game. Mm-hmm. But you could beat Boston College in Boston. You could. Mm-hmm. Yeah, both being away games makes it a little tough, but um, they probably need one of those games. And I, I'm not even going to lie, even though Iowa is known for their high-level defense, listen, Cade McNamara, mm-hmm. what, what, what do we expect at this point from Iowa? Like they, they brought in Tim Lester. They brought in a new offensive coordinator. Mm-hmm. He says they're going to improve the passing game. How many times have we heard that in the past five years? Yeah. And listen, if that Michigan State crowd is rowdy, Jonathan Smith is starting to like get some things going, mm-hmm. and there and Iowa's offense still isn't much. They could come into Michigan State and things could get chippy. Yeah, it's possible. Yeah, and then I would have said, you know, the Michigan Michigan State game is always there's always a chance, and there is, but going to Michigan always yeah. makes it. That much it, it's, a, it's a really tough going to Michigan. This for but if they were if it was at Michigan State, I would be very nervous. Yeah, because that's how much I like Jonathan Smith as a coach. Right. Plus, they're playing late enough in the season. Both teams would kind of be, you know, in in that groove at that point. But you never know. It's a rivalry game, so things can happen. But it's definitely tougher being on the road. So we'll see. I'm again. I'm just excited for once, and I I feel like I haven't been excited about Michigan State football in a, in a little bit. Yeah. Thing, things might get a little weird because 
I, I just said I like John. I, I really enjoyed watching his teams at Oregon State. I liked Aiden Childs coming into Oregon State. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna find myself rooting for them <laughs> at certain points this season, and it's I, I don't know how how I'm gonna feel about it. Mm-hmm. Like in that Iowa game, I think I'm gonna cheer for Michigan State. And is that bad? Is that a bad thing? I don't think so. Personally, I, uh, like. You really I, want to root for like, Iowa? As a Michigan fan, I, I I guess I'm just supposed to hate Jonathan Smith and Aiden Childs now. Mm. But, man, I, I don't know. I don't know if I have that much hate in my heart. <laughs> I don't know if I do. But do you really want to root for Cade McNamara in Iowa? I don't. So <laughs> I, I really don't. That's kind of where you have to weigh yeah. your options. Like, rooting for them to pull that upset isn't too bad. Yeah. Because the very next week I'm going to expect Michigan to destroy them. So, mm. yeah. There it you is go. what it is, I guess. Um. So, yeah, um, and then we kind of looked at it before, but Michigan's schedule is a lot of up and down. Uh, they have Texas. Oh, gosh, just exit it out. Uh, Texas after Fresno State. Yeah. And then Arkansas State. Arkansas State. So then they get a, a little break. Then they go USC. That's at home. So mm-hmm. USC having to travel, that's their first big travel of the year, I believe. Yeah. Um, so that might that's probably going to be tough for USC. Yeah, I, I expect that to be a win. Mm-hmm. It could be tough because, obviously, USC, they have a high-level passing offense. But, yeah, yeah, I think Michigan will figure it out. Yep, and then they go – then it's at home against Minnesota. Should be no big deal. They go to Washington. Travel will be annoying. Washington but Washington is, just lost they are, everyone. They, 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 some people say Michigan is, like, remade. Mm-hmm. Washington is completely remade. Yeah. Like, in every aspect. So, I – I think Michigan should win that one, even though it's a road game. Yeah. Washington lost their quarterback, all three receivers. Like, yeah. they're they're retooling for sure. Then you get Illinois. Here's the, the bet road. I'll make. I think they beat Washington by at least 10 points. Okay. And I think Illinois is the tough game. Okay. I, I'm betting money right now that Illinois, it's before Michigan State, two weeks later is Oregon. Mm-hmm. I bet Illinois is the game where things get a little weird. Hmm. You got some turnovers. Alex Orgy might hit a little of a like a a weird spot in the season where he's getting really confident and throw some picks. Mm-hmm. Who knows what happens? Yeah, but I, I've seen them do do those types of things where just random middle of the season or late in the season game going into a big game week and yeah, and they're Illinois going to get chippy. They're going to Illinois too, yeah. so it makes that's it the big reason. Um. But luckily for Michigan, they get a very favorable home schedule. They get Michigan yeah. State at home. Oregon going to be really tough, but they do get them at home. I, I I'm chalking the one of that up as one of the losses. Yeah, I'd love if they beat them, but that's going to be very tough. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Indiana on the road, Northwestern at home, and then they got to go to the toilet bowl. <laughs> you said it. I didn't. Of Ohio State, I didn't say it. Yeah. Whatever they try to call it. It's the a horseshoe. It's a toilet bowl. <laughs> toilet seat. Whatever you want to call it. The toilet seat. <laughs> Once again, Joey Tyson said it. I didn't. So, you know, I have no problem saying it. But um, I know Ohio State's going to be really good again this year. We talked about them a couple weeks ago, too. But, again, the Michigan, we're not, we're not expecting them to make another run back-to-back. That would be wild. But – they should be in the hunt. Yeah. Should be in the hunt. The Oregon game is going to be obviously the big one. And it stinks for Michigan, I would think, unless they, you know, struggle with Illinois. If they beat down Illinois and Michigan State, I don't think those are good warm ups to playing Oregon. I think you want to be tested before you play Oregon or humbled before you play Oregon. Yeah. It- the Illinois thing might come into favor for them mm-hmm. if like, if it's a chippy game. Yeah, if if Illinois hangs around and Michigan still wins, Mi- Michigan State could also make it tough for Michigan at yeah. the big house. So if if all of a sudden those games are tough, then I think they'll be like, okay, we may locked in. We underestimated these small teams. Now we got Oregon, so we got to really lock in. Yeah, um, it, it just might help. But if they if they blow past those two teams, I don't know. Maybe they can lock in. Maybe they have the mental capacity to do it. I just always think it's a little nervy to have like those easy games leading up to like possibly your biggest game of the season. So interesting to uh, see. Yeah, there are also Sunday and Monday games, which are 
It's yeah. it's weird, but it's the Florida State it's the playing first week. on yeah. Monday. They play, Florida State back played uh, LSU last year on a Sunday. Yeah, and that game was awesome. That's mm-hmm. when Florida State kind of broke out. Keon Coleman had a big game. Yeah. yeah, this year it's USC and LSU, mm-hmm. and I believe it's oh, it's in Vegas. I forgot. I wish it was at LSU. Mm-hmm. We I I have uh, an opinion on wow. these preseason kickoffs. And different, yeah, that, I c- cut the shit. I, I'm 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 getting tired of it. Like, what can we stick? You're cutting away so many great parts of college football yeah. with these money moves. Why can't we just keep these sites where they're supposed to be? Yeah, especially because like students are gonna miss out on these games, or they have to pay money to go travel. Yeah, do you really want college kids pay- having to pay to go travel? They're already paying tons in tuition. It's a whole another story, but it's a football podcast. Um, <laughs> yeah. So I, I don't mind. Yeah, I, I don't mind that. one or two like big time. If it's like two versus four, yeah. major preseason kickoff or like the playoffs and all that. Like, yeah, that's been going on forever. But like you're saying, like big early season games don't happen too often. Only a certain amount of teams get them, and you're kind of taking them yeah, away. Like I, I'm honestly surprised Michigan Texas is going to be at Michigan, mm-hmm. and they didn't move it to like the Lion Stadium or something. Like yeah. I, I'm happy it's at Michigan. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Michigan always win. Cheaters. <laughs> Listen. I haven't watched the Connor Stallions. Uh, I'm Netflix surprised they didn't yet. get Ohio State at home again. <laughs> then they would have had Texas at home, Oregon at home, and Ohio State at home. I should have watched the Connor Stallions thing before we started this. It would have been good. Opinions. Maybe we should both. I've, all, I've just it. heard people's opinions. Yeah. And it, it's the same stuff. Mm-hmm. The people that said they cheated are doubling down, and the people that said it didn't matter much are doubling down. Mm-hmm. Like, it is what it is at this yeah. point. It's over, people. It's over. It'll never be it over happened. for some people. <laughs> I know. Ohio State fans, it'll never be over. It's wild. Listen, they they still expect the hammer to be dropped. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's coming. Yeah. Well, you know, it's it's just one of those things that people just can't can't let things go. People are still talking about the 2016 presidential election, which is wild, but they do. So, anyway. We starting a political podcast? No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm not political at all. I hate it. But I just, you know, talking about you seeing both sides just doubling down. That's how I feel. Yeah. So wild, wild. So week one of college football is here. And week one of the NFL season is right around the corner. And I don't know what else to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> we can talk about our uh, NFL storylines we like because uh-huh. we're going to start picks next week. Yeah. And we're just going to get right into the picks. Yeah. Oh, this is interesting. The uh, New York Jets signed uh, Lewis Seen, the former Vikings first rounder. Yeah, that I got saw he got cut. Dropped. Do you yeah. want to talk about all the Georgia players? A lot of them getting cut. Either not living up to the hype or getting cut. Yeah, it is. It's interesting. And a the, lot the of Eagles them. went all in, and it still could work. Yeah. We'll see. But so many yeah. former Georgia players that were on that championship roster getting cut, but got paid because they were first round picks. That's a story within itself. Listen, some it, it's a it's a strange correlation sometimes between the dogs on the college level, yeah, and you put them in the NFL, and for some reason it just doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know why this is coming to my brain for some reason, but you look at somebody like Ray Lewis, who a lot of people said he was undersized coming out of college. He was an absolute monster at Miami, yeah, but he was like maybe six one, like six foot, two hundred thirty something pounds, around two forty. Nobody, yeah, like he he was expected to be good. Nobody expected him to be the greatest linebacker of all time. Right. And then you have other guys that yeah come in with all the hype in the world, blow teams away. Devin Bush, mm-hmm. I, was he the tenth pick for the Steelers? He was like tenth, eleventh, or yeah. something like that. They traded up, traded a, like a lot of their picks away to go get Devin Bush, and for some reason he didn't fit. Yeah, his size. Some guys can come in at a, at a little undersized and it doesn't matter. He came in undersized and it didn't work. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's weird. Some of those Georgia guys is it just hasn't hit. Right. And Trayvon Walker, it, didn't he have 10 sacks last season? He had yeah, a, he, he had a did. decent season. Yeah, they he had weren't, a decent season. 
I saw somebody bring that up that he had 10 sacks last year, but they were kind of ugly sacks. Like they weren't. Yeah. Like he wasn't, he, didn't look like a world beater. He had a good season, but it, Aiden Hutchinson becoming what he became, mm -hmm. it overshadowed him. Yeah. It definitely did. Right. Um, and you, you speak about like Ray Lewis, like Aaron Donald played for Pitt. Like he was yeah. good, but he was dominant his you know, last season at Pitt. Yeah. People expected him. His film was great. Mm -hmm. Scouts were in on him, but he still wasn't like the top pick he's in the still, draft. He's still kind of undersized, per yeah. se. One of the greatest <laughs> defensive lines. For 10 straight years, <laughs> completely wrecked the league. Yeah. So it's weird how that happens. Yeah. Um, and you never can fully tell. Uh, speaking of storylines, too, I just saw that uh, Gerard Mayo has picked his quarterback one for the Patriots, but he's not informing anybody until tomorrow. <laughs> I I get annoyed by some of this stuff. Jim Harbaugh did this when he came, was at Michigan. Mm -hmm. Sharon Moore is doing this now. I, a lot of times I just wish coaches would pick a quarterback. Yeah. I understand why they do it to make sure they earn the job. Don't yeah. just give it to – but, yeah, you're a few days away from the – you don't have to keep playing the mental games. Yeah. You don't have to. Yeah, especially when you – like, especially if it's between two young guys, I feel like I understand it a little bit more to, like, try to see who's going to break first or something, but – Jacoby Brissett's been in the league forever, and then you got Drake May. So it's like a vet and a rookie. Well, I, actually, when I think about it, do, do you want to throw Drake May out there week one? Yes. With how weak this roster is? Yes. Uh, he could I, – I don't know, man. I don't know. He could get killed. <laughs> like, both his body and his confidence can both be gone by yeah. midseason. And then what do you do? I don't know. And then the rebuilding project starts, and how often does that work? So the problem for me with all this stuff— like, I'm not saying just sacrifice Jacoby Brissett to the football yeah. gods, mm -hmm. but I'm kind of saying sacrifice Jacoby Brissett to the football yeah. gods. Yeah. Well, for me, it's like you never know what's going to happen because you got guys like Trey Lance that they wanted to sit him, let him sit behind somebody. He's and, one of the most unluckiest. And get him to work. He gets injured— and then he plays finally. Doesn't look yeah. that great. I well, I, I don't think that was the thing. Well, are you talking about the first injury? Because he he earned the starting job, played one game, and then tore his ACL week right. two against the Bears. Yeah. Are you talking about when he came back after that? Yeah. Oh, okay. And so like, you just never know what's gonna happen to guys. And then like on the flip side, like you can start somebody right away, and they could be like. Trevor Lawrence and Mac Jones. Like, Trevor Lawrence is, he was supposed to be a generational player. He's still young. He still has time to yeah, do that, so. He, he clearly had to rebound after that Urban Meyer year. But he came, and his second year was pretty good. Yeah. But he came into a rough situation, but he still looked good. There was talent there. Second year looked really good. And then, like, last year he was, he was okay. He wasn't anything special. And then Mac Jones, like. His he, rookie year was his best year. Yeah. <laughs> Mac Jones looked great in his yeah. rookie year, and you're like, this is the future look, of the Patriots. And you take away his coordinators. You make that guy with the pencil and the hat mm -hmm. his offensive coordinator. Yeah. And things go down quickly. And I would argue Mac Jones had a worse team than Drake, Drake May has right now. You mean last year? Hmm? You mean last year? or Because like, wasn't last year's third year Mac Jones? Uh, maybe. I think, was, was, like, I think last year was But wasn't Mac Jones' original roster not very good? Like his rookie season. Well, he, it was it was decent because they 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 were saying like Mac Jones is good for this team because they can continue. Mm. They went nine and seven, I think. Yeah, they, so they, they did. They, good. they still had a decent roster, but especially I'm, defense. I'm just trying to think of who they had. Like, I yeah, I they had, I, their I mean, defense was good. They had Hunter Henry, and I think they had another tight end. I can't remember who. Mm. They had two good tight ends. They had solid receivers. Yeah. But, yeah, he, he had a good rookie season. Because, like, I feel like Drake May has a, a decent offense around him. Decent. Um, like, your, your top receivers are rookies. Right. So, that's, that's that's the problem. Yeah. But I think Jalen Polk could be somebody. I like him and Javon Baker. Yeah. yeah. Javon Baker is a good um, pairing with Jalen Polk, I think. You got Ramondre Stevenson, who's kind of become a veteran there. He seems pretty – he's not, like, elite running back, but he's, like, that next tier. Do they sign Mike Gesicki? Um, or – Who's their tight end? Did they sign Mike Gesicki? They I can't remember. I, I, yeah. I don't remember I'd either. Have to look it up. Because they definitely signed somebody. But I don't know. Like, we've seen Jacoby Brissett play for multiple teams. Yeah. 
And I get to he the point for a few weeks and then I get to yeah. the point of like, if you don't think your team is like within the realm of playoffs, just why, get the just, bad stuff out now. Just play the rookie. See what he's got right away. Especially too, like this is the year for the most part. The division is kind of down. The Jets, they might be the best team in the division. But we don't know. Aaron Rodgers is 40-some years old. As long as Josh Allen is still around, they're going to get the predicted thing. But but the Bills yeah. have a lot to figure out, too. Like they they're, they're retooling. Mm-hmm. They still have Josh Allen, but their receiver core is wildly different. Keon Coleman might be their best This guy. will be their first full year of their new offensive coordinator. Um, and then the Dolphins, I feel like they kind of peaked last year. And they got outed in well, the whenever it gets Whenever it gets cold, you know what's going what's to happen to them. And you play in the AFC <laughs> East, which is a cold division. Yeah. So, like, I think the division has a chance where they could – the Patriots could be competitive. I'm not going to say good or know, anything man. like that. I'd, I don't know if they're going to be competitive. Not like – I, I think – And maybe that's the wrong They word. might be at best a four-win team. I Listen – if they went six and eleven, mm-hmm. their fans would probably be ecstatic. If yeah. they went six and eleven, mm-hmm. like, I man, they, it's gonna be a rough season. Let's see. Drake May showing good signs is like all they have hope yeah. for. So their receiver room is is pretty solid. Yeah. I mean, again, very young and but, Christian Gonzalez, but yeah. So, uh, Jalen Polk, Javon Baker, Kendrick Bourne is still there. He's still on the trade block, I believe. Um, Demario Douglas. KJ Osborne is there, so they do have like a veteran. Um, Tyquan Thornton, maybe he can finally figure it I out. He was still there. Yeah, um, it, it's a little interesting. They yeah. they re-signed Hunter Henry apparently. Oh, okay. Uh, so okay. they have Hunter Henry and Austin Hooper though. Oh, okay. So they could go back to running two tight end sets. Yeah, and they, um, yeah, they have Ramondre Stevenson. Mm-hmm. I don't know how their offensive line is going to look like, um, but it could be okay. And then their defense is going to be okay. Bill but. Belichick's best pick in the past five years, I think, was Cole Strange, hmm. which shows how terrible their drafting was. <laughs> but for some reason, they hit on Cole Strange. Mm-hmm. Well, now that we're just talking about the Patriots, I'm just going to look at their schedule. Okay, it's not good. Never mind. They're not going to be good <laughs> this year. Look, <laughs> no, there's, don't even look at it yet. Okay. Let me just tell you. Bengals, first game. Is it at home? No. <laughs> at Cincinnati. Their first home game is against the Seahawks, which I think the Seahawks are going to have a bounce back season. But maybe there's well, a chance they get yeah. them. Then they go to New York to play the Jets. They go to San Francisco. It'd be hilarious if the Patriots won that game. It would be. They go to San Francisco. Then they go back home, but they play the Dolphins. The Another- Dolphins are going to put 40 on them. Yeah. Another home game against the Texans. Jesus Christ. That's how they start their season. This is insane. And then they go to London to play the Jaguars. Can you imagine if they start three and three? That'd be wild. That that'd be incredible if they started three and three. Even two and four. Yeah. Because they could uh, literally start 0 and six. Oh my God. Their schedule is brutal. That and is then insane. to have to go to London to play the Jaguars, which I think the Jaguars are going to be okay. And then they come back home, play the Jets. Then they go to Tennessee to play the Titans. Then they go to Chicago to play the Bears. They get back home to play the Rams, go to the Dolphins, home against the Colts, go to the Cardinals, go to the Bills, home against the Chargers, home against the Bills. And this is with a brand new head coach. New, uh, oh. Yeah. And the problem is like, this is why I asked if Drake Mason yeah. start. <laughs> so the other problem is like, the Titans are supposed to be a little bit better this year. The Bears are supposed to be much improved. The Rams, if they stay healthy, should be good again. People think the Colts are going to be improved. People think the Cardinals are going to be improved. Yeah, okay. They're not having a good season. You know what? I feel bad that I said that now. See, I, I still it's bad. It's I bad. still think they should go with Drake May, but it's going to be rough. Yeah. Yeah. Cuz how do you like cuz you're on board with like Caleb Williams and Jaden Daniels. I know they're already announced yeah. as the starters, but like I said it in the draft process and I I still I like Drake May a little bit more than Jaden Daniels as a quarterback. Now, mm-hmm. Jaden Daniels could be better. I mean, he's 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 got the starting job. Yeah. Um. I mean, yeah, we'll see. But, like, if Washington had Jacoby Brissett and Jaden Daniels, like, who would you start? 
on that team? Probably. Like, would you go percent. along the same lines of thinking? Yeah. Okay. I'm just curious. I just always lean towards if you're a franchise in in kind of turmoil, just go with the young guy. I, like, just see what they got. See, I I go back and forth now because unless uh, unless you're in that situation of like Green Bay where you have Aaron Rodgers and you have Jordan Love sitting behind him, like an all time great, then I'm like, okay, let's we can sit him, learn from this guy. And I'm not saying that Jacoby Brissett's like a bad veteran or anything. He's a good player. But I don't know if yeah, Jacoby Brissett, I don't know if somebody needs the, to sit yeah. behind him. Yeah. Personally. Jacoby Brissett still wants to like fight for starting jobs yeah. in this league. Right. And yeah, it's it's not even like when Pat Mahomes learned behind Alex Smith. Pat Mahomes has said Alex Smith taught him everything he knows right. about being a uh, like NFL quarterback. Mm-hmm. And Alex Smith was like a borderline top ten guy. Yeah. So yeah. And I like the player, but, you know, is Jaden Daniels really going to lose the job to Marcus Mariota? No. no. Marcus is there to mentor for the most part. Right. So, and he's, and see, he's almost a, a better mentor, I feel like, than Brissett. He is. Because he's <laughs> yeah. gone through so much more. Yeah. They've both gone through their injury problems. Brissett had some injuries early on, too. But Mariota jumping a lot of teams and, you know, being highly touted. Being a starter, thinking that he can turn a team around, and then being like sent to being a backup and kind of being back and forth, I think that's a little bit better of a mentor necessarily. But you might want to, you know, Brian Hoyer is doing uh, broadcasting for them now. No, yeah, I, I watched their first pre. Well, it was their preseason game against the Eagles, mm-hmm. and it was Brian Hoyer and one of their old broadcasters together. Mm. They might want to just bring in Brian Hoyer to help him because <laughs> he was there for so long mm. and he was there with Tom. Yeah. So, well, I'm sure he also has Tom Brady's number. Yeah. Play Drake May. <laughs> yeah. He's got Tom's number. I'm sure Tom will come to the facility yeah. at times when he needs help. And I just think, too, getting – like, you're already a young team. So get the young quarterback involved with the, the ones that are all yeah. young already. All these guys are the future and you're the future. Right. Because if they turn into something, like, it could be good. You could have a long, tenured team that could yeah. be – you know, a playoff team. I'm terrified for them, but yeah, yeah they, that they schedule made it so much worse for me. I yeah. take all my statements back. <laughs> um, but again, I, I want them to play the young guy. Yeah. Speaking of Jaden Daniels, what are you? What do you think his chances are this season? Of what? to maybe, you know what? Let, let's like, let's, what are the expectations? Let's, let's, let's shoot for the stars a little. Offensive rookie of the year. Uh, I let's, think it's, I mean, I definitely think it's within the wheelhouse. So they he, start. He looked more comfortable in the preseason than I thought he would. Yeah, and he has a veteran in Terry McLaurin that he can go to. I think that's going to help. Yeah, um, one of my fantasy receivers, Terry McLaurin. Yeah, they get the Bucks. They have to go to Tampa Bay. That'll be interesting. Come home against the Giants. Go to Cincinnati. Go to Arizona. Oh man, this is home against the Browns. You got the Bucks, the Giants, and the Cardinals the first four weeks. Yeah. Even though the Bucks should still be decent, but right. it's not the worst start yeah. to an NFL career. Then you get the Browns at home. You go to Baltimore, Baltimore. home against Panthers, Carolina. Bears, Giants. Yeah, they they Damn. they have a favorable schedule. Yeah, this is this is workable. The end of their season, well, I guess not really. Their last this three games workable. are kind of tough, playing the Eagles, Falcons, and Cowboys. Yeah, but two of those games. Who knows games what are those teams will be at the end of the season? Right. Um, but yeah, I, I think. The commanders have a chance to be able to be something. And I, I like Jaden Daniels. He's my favorite yeah. um, rookie receiver. With that schedule, he has a real chance to or get covered. quarterback. Jeez. Um, and, yeah, I don't think there's any – there's not that many rookies that I think can compete with Offensive Rookie of the Year. Marvin Harrison, of course, is one in Malik Neighbors probably. But it's hard for a receiver, I feel like, unless they just explode. So, I don't know. All right, now we filled our time, so we're good. Um, we just had to talk knew, about some I knew NFL we would rookies. Get to talking. I knew it. I mean, I knew we'd figure it out too, but I ran out of the topics. I should have wrote down more. But next week, we don't have to write down anything because it's just football. We can go full sicko mode, and college football for one half, NFL picks for the other. I'm, I'm you feel it beyond going? excited. I'm feeling. I'm feeling. But uh, so next week, full slate show of football. We'll see you guys next time. It's been Views from the Sideline.